film which the title gave us a thought and idea for what it is all about. We can use this expression because of someone or something that we have not seen for a long time and give us a nostalgic feelings. We can use blast from the past um, for a light-hearted way, referring to such as um, old fashion or old songs that we hear again and notice, which remind us of an earlier time. A naive man comes out into the world after spending 35 years in a nuclear fallout shelter. Adam Weber is the child of an eccentric inventor and his wife, following a bomb scare in the 1960s that locked the Webbers in their bomb shelter for 35 years, Adam Weber must venture out into Los Angeles and obtain food and supplies for his family. He meets Eve, who reluctantly agrees to help him out. In 1962, an eccentric scientist who, like so many people at the time, thought that a nuclear war between the United States and the Soviet Union was possible, built a bomb shelter in his basement. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, when he thought things were going to escalate, he took his pregnant wife into the bomb shelter. When the plane flying over lost control, the pilot bailed out and the plane crashed into their house which activated the shelter's locks, decide not to open for 35 years. She gives birth to a boy whom they name Adam, so Adam grows up being taught and exposed to all culture up to 1962. When the locks open, they are shocked to see how the world was changed. They decide to stay inside. However, their supplies have run out, so Adam goes out to get some more but gets lost and is helped by a girl called Eve. What is mental imagery? Mental imagery re refers to representation of sensory information without a direct external stimulus. Also, mental imagery can be described as a multi-sensory process combining as many senses as possible to generate a vivid mental image. It plays a central role in the executions of movements in and in human functioning. If you close your eyes and visualize an orange, what you experience is mental imagery, visual imagery, but mental imagery is far more pervasive in our mental life than just visualizing. It happens in all sense modalities and it plays a crucial role not just in perception but also in memory, emotions, language, desires, and action executions. Also, mental imagery can clearly involve all of the senses. In our lesson in cognitive psychology, mental imagery is defined broadly as the processing of perceptual-like information in the absence of an external source. One function of mental imagery is to anticipate how objects will look from different perspectives. People often have the impression that they rotate objects mentally to change the perspective. As he got out of their fallout shelter, Adam Weber seemed bewildered and amazed by the things that he saw. His behavior seemed that of a kid at a candy store towards the things that are new to him, which are pretty common for others. Now let's go back to the point when he was born. He grew up and spent his life living inside the shelter. He learned things from books and from his parents. He grew up in an environment where the, his parents are the only one present. As we all know, the environment shapes human behavior. It is not enough to only see and learn things from books. It is also important to experience them, and to grow up in a place where there is no one other than your parents, no friends, classmates, and people to talk to. A place where you only learn and imagine the things that you should have experienced and seen growing up. No wonder he acts like everything around him is something that he only saw in the books and stories. Keep in mind that it is important for a child to grow up 
in an environment where many people are present, to socialize with other people, and to learn and experience things at the same time. One of the most common examples of mental images include daydreaming and the mental visualization that occurs while reading a book. If you close your eyes and visualize an apple or any object, what you experience is mental imagery. But mental imagery is far more pervasive in our mental life than just visualizing. It happens in all sense modalities and plays a crucial role not just in perception but also in memory, emotions, language, desires, and action execution. That is how Adam in the movie grew up and coped up in the outside world. He was born in a secret fallout shelter underneath their house and in that kind of environment growing up is hard especially when you don't have any other choice but to imagine or make images in your mind of how things work out there. Example of this is the scene where his father is explaining uh, what a baseball game is. He was trying to picture things from the outside world by just listening to his parents' words. I bet he just imagined what the ocean or the sky looked like based on some books or his parents' descriptions since he never got the chance to see it for 35 whole years. Mental imagery attributes properties to the imagined scene and uh, imagined properties to the actual scene. This week's topic is mental imagery and today I will be setting up examples from the movie Blast from the Past that perfectly depicts mental imagery. The perfect example is the root of the movie as when the Weber family decided to go down to their fallout shelter assuming that a nuclear war will happen. When the family reached the base of the shelter, an explosion took place. Though they didn't see it, they just assumed the worst and Calvin Weber decided to lock themselves up in that shelter for 35 years. Thanks to our senses, we can assume things, but they're not guaranteed to be accurate, just like in this example. This family had to spend 35 years of their lives thinking a nuclear war happened, and that's no thanks to their mental imagery. Another example is when Adam told Eve about their fallout shelter and how he wants to take her there and live with her, while also mentioning how healthy he thinks Eve is. Though Adam was speaking the truth, the mental image in Eve's mind didn't sit right. The way she saw it was Adam wanted to keep her in a creepy underground shelter. That's why she had to contact somebody capable of taking Adam away from her as she started seeing him as someone dangerous. My last favorite example might be when Eve explained what a dickhead is to Adam and Adam fell upon seeing a mental image of what Eve has just described. He took it quite literally. For the conclusion, in the movie Blast in the Past, Adam, for the first time, is about to leave the safety of the underground for the overwhelming complexity of the 90s, and this Eve is about to get a whole new perspective in life when the time triggered locks on the Weber's shelter at last open. Adam is set up to replenish supplies and find a nice non-mutant girl from Pasadena. In order to repopulate, the world with upstanding citizen, Adam's hapless search in the brave new world of homeless people, adult bookstores, and all-night supermarkets lead, leads him smack into Eve. At first, she just can't believe these guys who say is mom, thinks seer soccer jackets are stylish and does never seem color television is for real. But the more Eve watches, Adam approach the world with wide eyes. Comic miscomprehension, joyous delight, and a deliciously sweet innocence. The more she begins to find herself falling in love. But a question still remains. Can these two find happiness in the real world? Or will their sparks send Adam back underground?